Hi, I'm here. I'm actually Hi. here, <laughs> believe it or not. Anyway, I, let's see, since Steve Jobs died yesterday, I decided today to bring my original iPod. And uh, you guys can play with it. It's a brick, it's like a deck of cards, like an old fashioned deck of cards. It's got a, um, oops, why is it not clicking? Oh, yeah, it's got a real ball bearing. Can't, I can't make you hear the sound. It's got a little piezo, it's called a piezoelectric little feedback mechanism that gives you some sound and uh, it holds 1,000 songs. It's pretty good. Um, anyway, I'm going to try to draw it. Before I do, I'm going to try to put this image online. It's a mouse that uh, Todd found. It's got some really great parting lines. I can't really see it too well. And I was trying to look for an image of an iPod kind of the way I like to draw it, but it's really hard, like that's the closest I can find. Um, anyway, since we're talking about old stuff, this thing is going to be 10 years old uh, in about a month. I thought I'd share a couple of technologies with you guys, because maybe you don't know them. One of them is CCs. You know when you CC a friend in your email? Carbon copy. Carbon copy. Have you guys ever seen carbon copy? You put it in a typewriter so you get like six copies of the same thing. And it's pretty cool because I can, I can do, I don't know, what am I going to do? Uh, a guy. <laughs> Maybe something like that. And yeah, kind of. And voila! I have a second one, and I have a third one. Look at that. I made three at once. That's called carbon paper. That's what CC stands for. It's beautiful stuff. Uh, another really cool thing that you might not be aware of, and that's what I had to go through in college, is letter set or press type, these beautiful sheets with which you would set your type. Normally you would just set your headlines because you can set body copy with this. And the way this works is you take a pencil or a thing called a burnisher and you just press down. Let me show you. This is truly magic. Okay. Now you don't see it. Now you see it. Now you're going to Maybe see it in like a few seconds. You okay, go like that. And oh, it broke, sorry, but now you see it. How is that? Beautiful B, right? So I really wanted to say P, but I forgot. Anyway, it's got little nice little lines so you can align your type on the paper with a blue pencil, which wouldn't reproduce when you photographed it. And, uh, that's how things were done. Uh, so let me write down my name. It was really sharp type because, of course, it's like uh, I don't know what, what what's the equivalent. It's like a sticker, really. It's amazing that this is probably 20, 30 years old. This thing and it still works. Uh, voila. You get books what? Right. Yeah, you could you could order your type based on just like specimen books. So that's an I. I'm doing pretty good. I got two letters. Now I'm gonna do an N. The end looks a little messy. And you would test, of course, your kernel capabilities, right? And your sensibility to that. It's really, really smooth actually when you do this. It like just transfers it beautifully. Oh, what am I doing? I'm talking while I'm. Well, I'll have an H in my name for that. I don't know. I have to do the end. Okay, almost there.
you know, when I graduated from college, before I went to high school, I mean, to uh, graduate school, the fanciest type piece of machinery was a Xerox machine that could actually do like two, co two colors. Like you could run, you know, a, a black ink first and then you would run a blue ink, say, and you could, you know, you'd have to have two originals, of course, one with each color to do your two color job. And that was really high tech. Voila. That's it. Some lapino or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty nice. It's really, really sharp. Anyway, that's Letter Set, uh, which I think still exists as a company. In fact, they make all kinds of, I guess, markers too. Um, anyway, I'm just going to try to draw the iPod. Which is actually quite tough because it doesn't, you know, it's all white and it's got this shiny surface. Um, but like I said before, if I can get away with, I mean, if I can do a good shape, a good form, I might be able to get away with, you know, okay shading and okay marking, markers and colors. And so that is to say, for example, if you use really light, um, like markers, you, you're ahead of the game because... You can always fix it later. Um, so I'll just draw it as I see it from here. And um, I'll just repeat myself, but once again, if, you, if you're drawing an object, really, really the easiest way is to do it with your, you know, 30, 30 degrees, because, uh, just because then everything, life is easier. You know, your lips is going to be easier. Um, you're not going to have to worry about, you know, if, if this is different from that, should I foreshorten one side or the other. So what I'll do is I'll just, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pencil drawing and then go put a layer over with um, uh, marker paper. So I'm just going to move this so I can, I can turn the paper. And again, just practice moving the, your paper around so that you get your movements kind of always in the same direction, which is probably from left to right or right to left, if you left ended. And um, yeah, so that's my basics. Got my layer here. And now I just need to position my my circle, and again, I'm lucky because I can do it very symmetrical. So, you know, don't get too upset or caught up in your shading yet if you haven't gotten your shapes correct yet. Okay. My, one of my favorite things about the iPod when it came out was that it was this brilliant uh, idea that they had that you could scroll through a menu using the wheel, which, you know, was already there in like VCRs if you wanted to like shuttle back and forth and fast forward. But it's really like a, what is it called, a cam camshaft? Anyway, it's like what you have in your car, you know, where the movement, which is linear, gets translated into a circular motion um, from the pistons to the wheels. And here's the opposite, right? You turn the wheel and it turns it into a straight motion, you know, up and down the menu. And that was really, really brilliant. Incidentally, they, the iPod actually used a, a, a software that they licensed from a tiny little company that was making, you know, MP3 players software. And, uh, okay, so I'll just put screen. Yeah, my proportions are not so good. Okay. It's funny, that's like with everything. If you stick around long enough, stuff will really become, you know, I don't know, cool and, oh yeah, I have the first thing. But, you know, when you get it, you don't think about it. Uh, by the way, I don't know, I'll, nah, I'll talk about grades later. 
and absences to do a little uh, summary. Okay, let's see. Where is that? That's probably nine o'clock. And the same with the corners, you're just going to repeat your little ellipses there, right? So just determine what you are and what they are, and remember, they actually repeat across, if you use this projection, right? If you use a different one, then it might not work so well, but if you use that, whatever you do on top here, it just flips over on this side here, and the same from here to there, okay? So this little bit right here is going to be you know, repeated there, and this little part here is going to be repeated on this side. So that's that's something to remember, and you know, instead of trying to do everything kind of custom, you know, you just you can sort of recycle pieces. Um, It's great if you actually look at the uh, patents for these things, all the things from Apple. Uh, the drawings are really, really simple, you know, of course, just like in the patent style. Um, but what's really interesting is that whenever they were doing something new with the design, they called it ornamental design. It's funny, they used that word, uh, which really meant the exterior of the product, right? Uh, so this, you know, the staircase that supports you know, that you take to go up upstairs in the Apple stores, that's an ornamental design. Um, okay, so the iPod is rounded on the, on the back here, you know, kind of a continuous curve, but very regular. So remember that when you do the bottom on something like that, you just shift your curves in from wherever uh, your originals were. So I'm going to try to do that. So they would be here, but instead I'm going to make them a little bit further in. It would be here, but I'm going to make it in. And here, I'm just going to push it in. So if you use marker paper on top of your, you know, original maybe pencil. Uh, if you use marker on pencils, I don't think you can erase it afterwards. So it can be a little bit of annoying if 
if you have stuff that you can get rid of once you, you know, once you put your markers on. Um, so, again, because this is pretty much white, um, I'm going to try to actually let me mark something. I'm going to try to highlight and leave my just really some nice areas that I'm not going to touch at all, which are going to suggest my um, uh, my reflections or my highlights. This morning that would be something easy to draw, but it's not. <laughs> As with everything. Usually with reflective, and we'll go over this when we do the surfaces like metals, the, the reflections are very much vertical, um, so you can't see them now, but the way I'm looking at it, I can see that it's really, really strong.
circle in the round spot. It's a little bit too far there. Um, I tried to fix that, but I'm too lazy. Uh, let's see. I should probably do a whole new one. What? No. Templates, yeah. <laughs> I know it's just that it's self centered. Uh, you know, I got it in the wrong, wrong spot. I mean, it's, there's a sense, but. Okay, I think I'll stop. I need to practice this a little more. <laughs> 